Everyone, welcome to Worship Artistry. I'm Jason. I'm Nick. And today, Nick, we are talking about EG2. Are we? We are talking about nice. EG2. What is EG2? Electric Guitar 2. That's right. Now, why is it number two? Well, at Worship Artistry, we tend to, well, we don't tend to, we actually, <laughs> every song is arranged for that single electric guitarist. Right. Right. So we look at it and think about, okay, if you're the only electric guitar, you got to make sure you hit these riffs and here's all the parts and also think about rhythm here and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. However, it's very freeing mm -hmm. when you have a second electric guitar. Yeah. It can make a world of difference if you know how to do it. Right, yeah. And if you do the wrong things, it can also make a world of difference, but like not in a good way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in this video, we're going to talk about what you should think about, the kinds of things you should uh, or the kind of ways you should approach songs mm -hmm. if you're a second electric guitarist and ways in which your guitar playing can work together to become like more than the sum of its parts. Right, yeah. So uh, right off the bat, Nick, you always like to tell people what we're playing through. I do, yeah. So why don't you important. start there? Yeah, so I am playing, we're playing through two different guitars today. A few times we've played through a similar guitar, Tellys or whatever, um, but this was intentional because I'm playing a Gibson with humbuckers. He's playing a Telecaster with single coil pickups. And that right there is going to be a, enough difference for the guitars to, to really stand out from one another. Because a lot of times we end up playing the same parts, but we play the same sound yeah. as well. Um, and then we're playing through the quad cortex. We're both going through it. It's in mono. He's going to be going through a capture of a 64 AC30, and I'm going through a capture of a Rev D25. Um, it's, it's my D25 is kind of Fender feeling, his Vox feeling, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so the difference in those sounds are going to be pretty big uh, and different enough to then have the parts kind of shine more uh, through. And it's really just a preference because yeah. you like this, you like AC30s, yeah, yeah. right? I don't. Uh, <laughs> I understand. I know it's blasphemy. No, it's not, it's not blasphemy. Yeah. It's I, a, I used to. Yeah. They're not, they're, AC30s are great for cutting through a mix. Oh, yeah. Because they're so chimey and trebly. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely, especially when you're playing by yourself or you don't have a big band, sometimes they can be a little on the bitey side. Don't, yeah, tell, don't, yeah. don't tell my box I said that. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just running a little bit of digital delay. Again, it's all in mono, and then I have a pretty big hall reverb. Jason has a little bit of tape delay and then a little bit of spring reverb, because that's about how you would run it typically, right? Yeah, I'm a very... I, I'm, I'm always impressed when people have a lot of effects going mm -hmm. on. I don't like to think about it too often. So yeah. I get concerned about clashing sure. yeah. and having big things. So I tend to just like, oh, I just want it kind of underneath. And yeah, yeah. I love being the lead rhythm player. Okay. <laughs> um, just because I think, you know, when we were at Innovators Conference a couple of years ago, me and Bradford oh, yeah, yeah, were both yeah. on the worship team. And I, I can play all the things Bradford plays, but I really like just going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to get into the song and not be thinking about my effects and everything. And so there, that was something that was really freeing for me. That. Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> that was something that was, uh, that was really freeing for me. And so we can sometimes look at it like, oh, it's not going to be exciting for me because I don't have the big parts. But right. honestly, it allows you to focus more on the words. It allows you to kind of relax into the song a little bit mm -hmm. more. And I love being the lead rhythm. Yeah, player. it's funny because I, uh, I hide behind the lead guitar because like it's so much more comfortable for me. And so when people do ask me to play rhythm, which is very rare, um, I'm, I'm like, yeah, totally. And then I get there and I'm prepared, I practice. And I was like, Woo, here we are. <laughs> like, you know, just all nerved up. And I think it's just because I don't do it often, but this today will be fun because I'll get to play a little rhythm. Yeah, a little right? bit, yeah. yeah. We'll play a couple chords. Cool. All right. Um, so let's let's go ahead and just dive into like a basic chord progression. Sure. I just taught the song Another One by Elevation, so it's kind of on the brain. Is that like the title? Uh, that's that the is, title. yes, that is the title. It's just not like it's, it's another, another. It's another one. Not, it's not, not another, another song. Elevation it song. is another song. It's another Elevation song, but the song title is, is another an, one. Got it. It is a little, con we had a little confusion in our office about that this week. <laughs> I can't wait Follow to put Instagram that video to see that. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a fun video. Uh, it's like a who's on first scenario. Exactly. Um, but, so that's one. So basic progression on this one. It's just a. It's in the key of D. It starts on the G. So let's make it confusing. Why not? Yeah, yeah. But it has this. With a real simple lead line that. Over the top of that. What is that? The lead line. Um, da, da, da. Yep. And then jump up. 
That's it. That's it. Very simple. Let me turn some of this off. off. <laughs> so very simple part. Interesting. Yeah, that's right? very simple. So in that scenario, honestly, if we were two electric guitarists, it's a very quiet part. Yeah. So you know what I don't need? Mm. Is an electric guitar player going. Or. Keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need that. Sound guy. Mute. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> Sometimes that in other parts of the song, that's going to make all the sense oh, in the world. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. In, in the beginning, no. <laughs> right. right. So with that'd that be a wild the, time. <laughs> Think about that. Just, just everyone, What's We're starting out on 12. <laughs> <laughs> no place to go. Yeah. Um, so, so thinking about that, mm -hmm. all right, what kind of things would you play underneath that? If I, let's say I was the lead, I was doing that lead. Yeah. What could you play? that like wouldn't get in the way but might augment what's happening there for electric guitar too yes yeah so uh, i would typically just go to like just an arpeggiated mm -hmm. kind of i would follow the chord progression sure very very lightly though maybe you just finger picked and even not like you know <laughs> but just right. like right you know then follow the chord progression but just very airy right. then you know the b minor And the beauty of that mm -hmm. is, A, you're kind of down in those lower, you're in that lower range, you're kind of mm -hmm. just filling that out a little bit. Yeah. And then at the same time, you're also creating rhythmic texture. Yeah. Because one of the big things, the big mistakes people make is they stay in the same rhythm. So if like a strum pattern is eighth notes, mm -hmm. they're both just wailing away on eighth notes, right? Mm -hmm. But if you actually subdivide and you have one guitarist playing, you know, quarter notes, mm -hmm and the other one's playing eighths, or one's playing eighths, and the other one's playing sixteenths. It creates so much more spread, right? Yeah, and so much more interest in like texture than if you just mm -hmm. play the same thing. Right, yeah, absolutely. So in that same scenario, mm -hmm. um, another thing that, something that I would think about doing would be to think about if the, if the acoustic guitar, for example, is playing that, from that lower range, I'd probably start with just some swells or something mm -hmm. underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know my volume. Pedal, yeah, it's a little I, harder. You know, but at the same time, just kind of hanging out with higher range, mm. right? Yeah, those are much cooler. Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's something that you can do. Just yeah. real, you know, nice, uh, nice quiet parts, kind of different ranges. There's a lot you can play around with with chords. So let's let's do this. Let's just to kind of give uh, a sense of that. Why don't you play that chord progression, and I'm gonna play what I would play. Like I said, kind of those other shapes, and we're gonna see how those different voicings kind of create some texture and and see what works. Because I can sit here and play it by myself and be like, see how cool that sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let's see how it actually sounds. Yeah. I was like, well, it's funny because I decided to change the, the voicing. I was like, I'll try this. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, that was me because I was watching what you're doing. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. What I noticed as soon as I started doing that, this B minor is basically the same thing as what you were playing. Yes. Yep. So it wasn't as good. Sure. So I wanted to start before we before we crashed and burned there. <laughs> I was going to try something different to be in a different range. Right. And that actually would have filled it out better because that's the b minor there you're saying so play yep. that again yep so um yeah versus i was yeah it's the same yep but the other thing you'll notice too you know at, at the end i was kind of just one you know one strumming it um i liked being on this b minor or like some kind of little extra thing mm. to glue those parts together but like i said i'd end up going oh, it's too muddy yeah so even though that sounds cool Mm -hmm. When you're playing the other thing, it doesn't sound that cool. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You know, and so that's one of the big things about communicating mm -hmm. with the other player and going, oh, you know, in my head, this sounded great. Mm -hmm. And when I was at home practicing by myself, sounded awesome. Yeah. And then I got here and it sounded not good. It's, why is this bad? Yeah. You're the problem. 
Yeah. Not me. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Especially on that last chord. <laughs> no, that was me. I pointed the wrong chord. <laughs> you were right. But you yeah, were improvising. no. It's, <laughs> yeah, just sucking. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just strange. The rhythm becomes so hard for me for. I can do it, but it's just so hard for me. But yeah, that that is interesting because that that was what I would I liked that chord a lot. The kind of yeah. what you're doing, but it does clash. It's just like it just turns into mud. Yeah, it's like yeah, nobody wants to hear that, but but yeah. no, that sounds cool. That's way cooler. Huh? Yeah, I like that. That's a good approach to that because I again probably because I really don't know rhythm guitar. Uh, I'm, I've always been in the camp, and I hate this. I'm sorry. Uh, that the Rhythm players are stupid. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at an early age, I was like, all you got to do is guitar solos. That's it. Just you tell know? me what key it's in. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that, I was that guy. <laughs> you're, that, <laughs> yeah. you're that guy, all right. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of the practices I had wasn't practicing. It was just, oh, what key went? All right, that's probably something like this, you know, because... Yeah. That's the way it becomes for me, and it's kind of like how rhythm is for you. Yeah. It's just like so natural, yep. um, and then you get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. So this is a lot of fun for me. Yeah, that's actually. great. Well, when you play lead guitar, it definitely makes me fear and feel inferior. So this is great. I'm feeling awesome right now. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> Good. So, um, so here's some other fun things you can do. Okay. Um, let's take a look at that at that riff now. Um, very simple part. Very very simple. right. But let's say you don't need to throw some chords under there because you got a keyboard player that's holding sure. it down. What else could you do? Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, you had brought up swell. I know you're gonna bring up something, but yeah. that's what I would do probably is just swells. Well, but swell I also think, think that like that's a lead guitar's part. Maybe it's not. I don't well, know. Here's a couple things that I think about, especially with single note riffs like this. Like one of uh, there's a band that I used to love called Broken Social Scene. They're chaos. If you listen, don't. I'm Sounds not suggesting like you go. It is. It's a broken music scene. <laughs> yeah. It's what it is. But they have like a million people in the band. And wow. one of the things that they would do on every once in a while is when they had a really good riff, they'd have multiple electric guitar players playing all that same riff. Mm. So no change. So, mm. you know, there are different guitars. So let's say we were in a bigger part of the song, but okay. we're playing that riff. <laughs> You play it with me. Do the same exact thing. See, we're not playing with a click. Yeah, it's much easier with off. click yeah. and drummer and rhythm. But uh, in that case, it's like, oh, it just gives it a different texture. Yeah. You know, maybe I might go more bridge. Maybe I'd go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throw two, three, four. See, but that's like a cool thing, right? Yeah. Like I'm emphasizing the main idea, you throw in some cool little thing mm -hmm. extra. Or playing the same thing, but maybe playing a different octave of it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So if uh, if you're going to play that first riff, and I'm up here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to play so, you wanna play together? Yeah, two, three, four. I won't do something cool now. Yeah, well, it'll sound it'll sound cool, you know, if I had, if I had all the sauce on yeah, it, right, you yeah. know. Um, or doing a lower octave. Yeah, yeah. Because it sounds whatever. different than playing the octave if I'm just sitting here going. <laughs> compared to if we're playing it separate, it's going to yeah. make a difference. And this is for like a bigger part with keys, like you have the pad. Yeah, I, yeah, I would use it. Yeah, you need to have the beef around it. Yeah. Because otherwise it's, you know, if you start a song off just like. Bam! Yeah, you just, know, you're on yeah. twelve. Yeah, it's gonna be like a strange kind of like metal song. All yeah, of a sudden. yeah, we're not trying to turn it into a metal no, song. No, no. Although that seems to be very popular. It on, seems very popular on the internet right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that though. Because yeah, like uh, if like because like for me, uh, what I would do is tick tick. If it's a big part, I would let and I had the keys like that. I would let the rhythm player take that lead line, yep. and I would do something like you know. And yeah. the, is in key of D. Yep. Yeah. So like, just very high things, and then like, yeah, stuff like that to to, to have more separation because, uh, and then probably to really emphasize emphasis, <laughs> really emphasize that lead line. I think it'd be really cool for like two measures leading into like the last chorus. I'm assuming it goes to a chorus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, then be like this big. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. the, the whole band's kind of grooving together then, but that's what I would do. Yeah, as the 
lead player thinking of rhythm and lead, I guess. Yeah, so you would put that, you would tell the rhythm player, hey, learn that yeah. simple lead part. Yep. Because you're not very good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd say immediately. Because you're not very good. Yeah. Could go slide guitar on it. Oh, you know? yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, that'd be, that's hard stuff, too. Here's something you could do quarterly that would be kind of similar. So give me those chords down low, and I'm going to do something kind of, you know, slightly different that way. All I'm doing there is just little eighth notes. I'm just staying in one spot. I yeah. Just pick a spot on the neck. I'm think. I always think about lead playing in okay. that position. Yeah. And so it's very easy for me to think about. Okay, that's kind of my root mm -hmm. chord, and then just kind of play around within that. Yeah, sure. So not getting, not creating full on other counter melodies. Mm -hmm. Though that's fun too. Another thing you can do. Um, here's, a, here's a little trick I like to do, especially when there's other instruments really carrying the rhythm of the song. You know, a lot of times we end up in these like parts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use those all the time in worship. I like to, if, if, if I have one guitarist that's kind of doing this thing, I like to go up the, uh, just, mm. which creates a harmony. Mm -hmm. Usually it just works. Yeah, right? yeah. So if you got one going like this and the other one's going. Yeah, it's just literally just. Right, you're just going on the scale, on the chord. So like, just try, just give me one of these, right? That little thing just creates this whole other, yeah. other layer to what's mm -hmm. happening, right? Without yeah. getting, once again, without getting in the way. Yeah. Do you have any other tips, like for um, somebody like me who, I can do all this, but I don't know that I can. So a lot of times, um, one thing that I think adds kind of a cool texture and layer is adding some octaves, especially in some big parts, right? Yeah. So there's a couple ways you can do it. Kind of a natural way is to just simply play the octave of whatever the root note is, Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so we'll do that first, but then I'm going to jump up the scale a little bit and find some more kind of counter melodies that will okay. fit with that. All right. So yeah. two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just finding things like little counter melodies that fit. Mm -hmm. Just listen to what fits. Yeah. But these are all things that you can try. Yeah. And go like, okay, well, let me play it with play play with it. And you know what? Be humble if it sounds bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, that didn't work. No yeah, problem. Yeah, that didn't work. All right, let's uh, let me try something different. Yeah, yeah. No, I like it because it's because uh, when you change it just enough, like the different notes, counter melody, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's still kind of similar to me. And it might just be like my mix versus yours or something, sure. right? But uh, it still has enough movement right. in it to, to make, be like, we're going somewhere, yeah. you know? So it's like building into something, I would say, or like coming out of something and to not be distracting and you're real big and you're hitting those... Right. Doo, 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 you yeah, know, it whatever. just kind of like raises the ear yeah. up a little, goes, a little oh, bit. I can tell something got lifted there. Yeah, yeah. Without it being like, look at that guitar player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Remember, as in anything, anything else, you're always trying to support your band members. Yeah, and so yeah. communicating in advance. When people always ask me, you know, oh, what if the, oh, we're having a second electric guitar this week? Like, what should I do? Hmm. And my answer is, talk to them now. Yep. And figure out what role everybody's not Sunday. Play. Yeah, not Sunday. Don't do it Sunday. Well, that's, those are all ways that you can approach that second electric guitar and yeah. let us know what you like to do. Yeah. Because it's these are just our ideas. And this there's so experience. many more ideas, yeah. you know, like I mean, you could do swells, you could do octaves, you could do different triads, you can do follow the other lead line and the lead guitar player could do something different. There's no real right answer, but I think there are some wrong answers. <laughs> I was going to say, there's so <laughs> many wrong answers. <laughs> because like, there are some really bad things you can do. Yeah. And that's, again communicate and practice. Yep, and you'll be in good shape. And if you do actually want to learn the lead parts just on your own, that will work. Right. If you're the only lead guitar player, check out worshipartistry.com. Try out that free trial. We've got almost 700 songs. It's I bet crazy. you in those 21 days, you can learn 700 songs. Absolutely. 
no problem. If you can do it, I will give you an account forever. <laughs> Email us. But you're going to have to prove it. <laughs> right. I need a, yeah. a seven-day video. <laughs> I don't know if I want to watch all that. <laughs> I'll just say, yeah, good job. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, go check that out. And of course, like and subscribe for Always. more of this. Because I feel like everything you just said at the end there, it's like, we could do a whole video on that. Right, we could, yeah. So if you were like, I wish they'd do a whole video on that. Let us know. Do it. We'll see you next time. Bye.